unsurpassable mystery within us, that those you are pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. And we make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's now be attentive to God's Word. And how fitting is a Deacon Mike this is a second holiday today on the Mother's Day, the first reading of the Acts of the Apostle gives us the institution of the establishment of the office of the deacon. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the Twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, or as we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem in greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to chosen and precious, 
and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that will make people stumble, and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And it goes on, this is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. We know that refers to Jesus. He's the stone that was rejected, and he's become the cornerstone of our salvation. What jumps out to me is the fact that you would think if anyone should be able to tell good stone from bad, what's good to be used in building and not. It's a builder. But nevertheless, we're told that the builders reject that stone. Even though the builders reject it, Peter tells us it's precious in the sight of God. But why? Well, it's because God measures things by his own love of them. And this stone has, that has been rejected is his son. And I don't think we can really fully understand or appreciate that kind of love without understanding the example of our own mothers. You see, mothers have this knack, this, this uncanny ability to see things the way that God sees them when no one else can. And nobody illustrates that better than our own blessed mother. She was able to see something no one else could when she gave her yes to the angel and accepted the Son of God. She was able to see something no one else could when at Cana she told the servers, do whatever he tells you. And when our Lord hung on the cross and all of his disciples and friends had abandoned him, our Blessed Mother didn't reject him, but she stood at the foot of the cross with St. John. But I also think of my own mother. I think of the person from whom I learned love. And one thing that's never ceased to amaze me about my own mother, and I think that we can all relate to this, is that she's not only willing to inconvenience herself or her family, for me and my siblings, but she's eager to do it. And when she can't, she's a little hurt. I remember her, this is several years ago now, but totally unprompted, making the 20 hour drive out to, out to Colorado to, to uh, take care of me when I had my wisdom teeth out in college. And even now, when I come home and spend a weekend there when I have a group weekend at the seminary, I think of the conversation that we have every time before I leave to head back. She always says, now won't you let me make you something to take with you? And I try the best I can to say no. You know, we, we have meals down at the seminary, we have food down there. But after doing my best, I end up leaving with, you know, a half dozen containers of, of good home cooking. And I think most of us can relate to that kind of love that's expressed in big ways and in small ways. St. Peter goes on in that reading to tell us to let ourselves be built like living stones into spiritual houses, to be the material that God uses to build up his plan. And the thing that keeps us from approaching God, the, king, the thing that keeps us from letting ourselves be formed by God, is guilt and shame, it's a sense of our own sinfulness, of our own unworthiness. But we shouldn't let that keep us from submitting to God. God calls us out of love, and he's not to be outdone in love and mercy, not even by our own mothers. And so I leave you with the words that God spoke through the prophet Isaiah. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you.
As Easter is a season for baptism and confirmation and new life and eventually we'll bring our catechumens again as in the full communion of the church. We're not able to do so in the Easter vigil uh, this past year, but eventually we'll be doing so. And so this baptismal season, our profession of faith is in question and answer form and the response to our uh, questions is, I do. Do you renounce sin? So as to live in the freedom of God's children, I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and the prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who is Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith, this is the faith of our church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord.
wash away my iniquity and cleanse me of all of my sins. Thank you very much. We now pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of praise. The praise of the Lord is in for our own good all of the church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected this sacrifice and made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant we pray that as we have come to know your truth, we may also make it our own by a worthy way of life. And we make this prayer for Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, Lord. But it is these of Easter above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. To him the children of light rise and their life in the halls of the heavenly kingdom. To the faithful, for his death is our ransom to death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome the past of joy, every land, every people exalting your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of glory. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and 
filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, her husband Joseph, the blessed apostle, the glorious martyrs, all the saints of his constant intercession, your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm the faith and charity of pilgrim church on right earth. Your servant Francis, our Pope, Dennis and Joseph, our bishops, your bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. This embrace you through the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, to gather yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to all of our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you and compassing this life, if kind and this your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord through whom you bestow upon the world all that is good. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the union of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Lord, I am not worthy that you should 
enter at my heart. Only say the word, my soul shall be healed. In the body of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life. In the blood of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life. The body of Christ. Everyone should have received the uh, letter from Archbishop Smur this uh, past week uh, at, at, at announcing that the public masses will again resume on Monday, May 25th. Uh, he's very aware of that uh, the, the process of reality, how we slow a patient process. It's going to take a lot of patience on all our, all our behalf. I'm not sure we have to know what the new normal uh, will look like, uh, but he did ask for us to warm ourselves up with daily mass throughout the week, uh, to warm ourselves up uh, uh, for the Feast of Pentecost and the regathering. Pentecost is all about rebirthing, uh, regathering, uh, renewal, uh, re rebuilding. Uh, the guidelines for gathering, gathering will be coming for so please pay attention to our announcements. Please pay attention to the first one, the uh, uh, suspension of the obligation of 10 Mass is still extended. Uh, we believe it's going to be until August of 15 the summer months. So those who are down, whether you should come or not, stay at home. Those who are sick, stay at home. We will slowly uh, regather. Uh, the safety the team will be taking a look at the guidelines for sure as we regather, the norms of social distance will, will be honored and to be intact. And so just please pay attention to the announcement the next couple of weeks on the, the process of the guidelines. We all need to patiently regather as a family and as a community of faith. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and be those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass in formal ways to new.
newness of life. And we make this prayer for Christ our Lord. Amen. Now bless the blankets prepared by our ladies society. I want to thank all the ladies for making these 150 plus blankets all over for Gwen and that. I want to thank all Christians who donated materials to make these blankets a possibility. Now bidding on Mother's Day, we bless these blankets. God, Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless these blankets. Blankets are a symbol of warmth in our life. They keep our bodies warm. Now, if we bless these on Mother's Day, we found the warmth that comes from the love of a mother, and we also found the warmth that comes from the, the Eucharist. As many of us are not able to receive the, uh, the Eucharist uh, uh, sacramentally, we do so spiritually. And may that spiritual communion, Lord, always remind you of, of the warmth of the love you have for us. May nothing ever, ever separate from the love of Jesus Christ in our lives. That is the love that will get us through this time. That is the work that comes from on high. And that is the, the work that comes from not only passing beyond the pandemic, but from this world to next, time to eternity, earth to heaven. And the gospel of Jesus Christ is on the way to truth and life. He'll show us the way beyond the pandemic. Show us the way to, to new life and show us the way to eternal life. And we make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. So always we bless religious objects with holy water and remind us of, of baptism. Baptism is all about new life. Thank you, Mike. And the end of Mass and Mass, I'll be sharing with you the people who are making a personalized uh, Face masks for me. I think I showed you a couple weeks ago. Somebody made me a, a white wine mask. I'm sure a day in the middle. I'm going to share what I got this week in the mail. It's all black. A clerical shirt. It's all black. It's got a nice, nice cross there. Cross there in the, on the lower, lower right. So uh, I want to thank those who, who keep me uh, uh, in, in the norm of the, these face masks. As we all honor uh, the, the, the practices and the policies of social distancing and keep ourselves healthy at this time. So, isn't that a nice mask? It's very befitting of a priest and a deacon. It's all black. 